It's a trap. Let me into my zone. Let me into my zone. Let me let me into my zone. Let me into my zone. Please don't let me. Welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. As we get started for the uh, Saturday morning over here from a actually a very bright and uh, sunny Helsinki, Finland. It's almost six degrees Celsius here. So for those of you who speak Fahrenheit, we're just above freezing, which is good. And I uh, might even get some sun today, of which I will not be getting any myself because I'm going to be on Twitch all day after this as uh, I have, as, as, as I plan to uh, to carry on the tradition that we've been doing for the last like three, four weeks now. So if you want to hang on uh, or sorry, if you want to hang out a little bit later, uh, I'll be on probably right after this uh, spring right after i post a stream also i apologize for the very dark hue on this uh video right now i don't know what's going on but uh obs has been darkening whatever the output is more and more over the last like month or so i have no idea why this is happening it's rather annoying i wish it was like true to color because it's obviously a few shades more than a few shades lighter than what you're seeing right now but of course me being a visual person i like to harp on those sorts of things maybe you care maybe you don't care but hopefully everything is visible here and if anyone happens to know a quick fix for this um is if this is a known issue because it, it for whatever reason it's happened on this computer but on my other one which is rather strange anyways uh i would appreciate some help with that if you do happen to know if not all good uh <laughs> We can just deal with it as it stands right now, and I'll figure it figure it out over time. Um, also, uh, what else do I want to say? Yeah, with the Discord, um, I, sh I figure I should make another announcement about it. But the Discord community, if you haven't already found out, or if you just kind of came back and haven't watched any of the videos from the last few days or this past week, you probably noticed a bunch of changes with the Discord. What's happened is we require now a verification by this verification bot which essentially prompts you with a message the first time that you log into the server. So that means if you are already a part of the server before uh, this past week, then you will actually need to leave the server and rejoin the server if you want to have those uh, those uh, that uh, that access restored back to the general community. Um, it's very simple to do. It's a little bit annoying, a little bit of an inconvenience, but it does make for a better community. And I'm actually really enjoying kind of the more intimate feel right now as uh, it's actually helped a little bit lessen the load on my inbox, which means that I get to hang out more in the, uh, in the community, which is what I enjoy most not fucking answering the same goddamn question in, in in dms all fucking day anyways um on top of that uh, what I should say, all jokes aside, is uh, if you are in the program, if you have if you have the TA program, the options program, or even the Jewel, you don't need to do any of that. You already have access, um, and uh, and you won't need to do, make any changes with that. Please do not leave unless if you actually want to leave. Of course, you know we're not here to handcuff you, but it'll just create more work for both yourself and myself, and uh, we don't need to do that. Um, but if you are a part of the general community, yes, uh, you will be prompted with that private message. If you do leave the server and then come back to the server again, there is a uh, an invite link in the description of this video or on crowntrading.net whichever one you want to take and um and then uh, and then just follow the rules in that private message or sorry not the rules but the directions in that private message to basically verify yourself with like a, a quick captcha something like that and uh and then all good so other than that what else do i want to say crown trading application right in front of your very face found at app.crowntrading.net it's free and now our developer is actually uh, he's recovering he's going to be released from quarantine i believe t t either tonight or tomorrow he actually even joined in on the twitch stream last night he seemed to be in really good spirits and uh uh, really looking forward to the next update for this which is what's going to bring out the open interest chart which couldn't come fucking sooner it's so funny how the delay happened right at like the most critical moment because this would, this would have been perfect to actually show the interplay between open interest price action volume and volatility of which we'll just have to wait a little bit longer but it should be relatively soon right after he gets uh right after he gets well and his wife's already covered so that's really good as well and uh and we're very much happy for that not just because he's creating amazing things for us for free but or for the community for free but uh but also well that's a person i like him <laughs> so so fair enough anyways um anyways looking at this right here we do see that open interest is more or less steady from yesterday to today we haven't seen any major breaks to the upside or to the downside which still lets us know that the big break out of this formation has yet to come meaning that an open eye and an open mind is the right uh is the right call on this as we are still a part of some greater whole formation and that's what i'm going to be doing today a little bit different because mostly the analysis from yesterday to today is going to be very similar um however i'm just going to redo my charts here from fresh scratch and uh, and see if we see anything different anything new and uh, and go on from there so this is going to be a little bit of a shorter video i do think and uh and i but i do want to keep that in the back of my mind the open interest still kind of uh still kind of within range suggesting that we are still a part of some greater formation here and that's further going to be verified by the metrics anyways looking at all the other um all the other top dashboard uh metrics more or less steady uh, we really haven't seen too much change in these for like the last couple of weeks actually fear and greed index just 
is all sitting between like a 10 read and a 20 read. We are right, at, we are right now at an 18. I still think that this is the one thing that makes me reconsider my inherent bearishness on this, as uh, that would be a damn good indication that we are kind of climbing the wall worry as Bitcoin is 2x off the lows and the market's incredibly fearful still. But does that supersede price action? Fuck no, it does not. So let's go to price action right over here and uh, starting off with actually the four hour. And I do want to start off with this right here, just very, very simple. Uh, Bitcoin's going to have a chance to undo, unfuck the death cross and go back into golden cross land on the four hour, which I do believe would at the very least give us a test back up to about 7350, 7400-ish region. And that's where things can get interesting once again from the higher term timeframes. Do I think that Bitcoin's going to break above that, you know, right now? No, I actually don't think so. Um, again, I, I actually do still lean a little bit more to the downside on this. I think that this is, I think that this ends up being a trap, but my opinion is not relevant. You should not give a fuck about my opinion. My opinion is wrong all the time. You saw it wrong uh, yesterday when I was, uh, when I was, or sorry, two days ago when I was bearish and then we had this nice little pump up over here. Um, now, for full disclosure, I'm not short right now. I'm completely covered and uh, just waiting for the next piece of edge. But uh, but at the end of the day, I do not trade my opinion. I trade technical analysis and technical analysis right now is shaping up for a little bit more of a uh, test of the upside here as the golden cross is being hinted at and will inevitably happen the longer that Bitcoin remains above 69.50 uh, pivot. Um, and uh, and if and if we do initiate that, I would at the very least look for a test back up here to the top side of this prior range, which can now pl uh, plot in with a nice little blue box territory. Got to 7350 to 7300 uh, ish regions where I have it now and we'll put a nice little blue box in there it's going to look absolutely massive on a four hour but uh, realistically this is only a $50 range so so we can actually even uh, while we're on here on the lower term time frames take this one step further and put a nice horizontal at our current resistance which seems to be holding uh, holding Bitcoin back for the time being in fact we can actually mark this off as a little bit of a liquid zone as the wicks and bodies do seem to match up pretty damn well and just shove it in right there and uh, if you're trading the very 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 low time frames which I think is absolute death and destruction on especially on a fucking weekend for God's sakes that's what I'd be using, although I would certainly not use that at all because I do not trade on the weekends and I don't care to trade on the weekends. Doesn't mean that you can't have great trade opportunities on the weekends, but I've found that over time, um, uh, my edge as a technical an or as, as a technical analyst, uh, my edge is seems to be stronger during the week's trading period. Whenever you know, as long as CMEs are kind of trading alongside. Anyways, um, to the downside, a little bit more easy as that 200 exponential average on the four hour still offers up the lovely, the lovely trappy trap behavior. So if we do want to reference the sort of opening statement of this video of which the opening statements are usually just for fun and whatnot uh, but there is a pretty important one right here if Bitcoin does break back down below the 200 exponential mean average this will be a this will be a trap and this will get a and this and this is very much under question right now and again this is very low time frame stuff right here but this is very much under question right now because this is a weekend and I am very skeptical of any sort of moves that I do see on a weekend as this, as it stands right now we are still still in a downturn on the four hour it's looking like it's gonna have a chance to actually revert this trend though especially if we you know especially if we take out on a closing basis 31 or sorry 7130 which we've gotten pretty damn close to already closing that last uh, that last local high somewhere right around 7100 even so it will very likely have a chance and if it is going to happen it probably does actually happen today or tomorrow uh, that being saturday or sunday depending upon your part of the world um and, uh, and, then, and then it will initiate the, grass, the sorry, the golden cross right in over here. And at the very least, a test back up here to 7370 uh, to 7350-ish region. That's where the higher term timeframes can change around. If I do see a break above 7350 uh, and a four hour closure above there, especially if it's like, you know, a higher time frame, like a 12 hour or daily, although playing the uh, playing the lower term timeframes right now may be a little bit more relevant, uh, then I would look for extension actually much higher, um, much, much higher. In fact, all the way to the tippy tippy top uh, from this last little order block area right here from the higher time frame perspective, in a range between about 77.50 and 79.50-ish region. Could we collapse that and make it a little bit uh, shallower? So it's a little bit less uh, less massive. Actually, yes, we can, because what I'd actually like to do is if we really do get that leap up, it's really this liquid zone right here that I think is actually more uh, more important because that's where your distribution is going to come from, most likely, if it does turn into distribution. Anyways, uh, so I would be looking at that as a range between about, yeah, 79.50 and 80.50. So a $100 range, I think that's a little bit more reasonable than a $200 range. So, uh, so yes, yeah, so if Bitcoin does close on new highs, um, especially on a higher time frame, like a 12 hour or a daily, I do think that we will very likely uh, work our way up here. But remember, according to the uh, according to our opening metrics, like the open interest right here, we are still seeing what we would expect if Bitcoin was caught in um, a greater formation on the whole macro scale. Because what I really want to show, which I can't right now, is an open interest chart, which would have shown you that open interest hit the rock bottom that we've seen, and typically the rock bottom for you know for major moves. 
um, down around about 500 million uh, open interest at around uh, March 13th down here in the uh, lower $4,000 region. And ever since then, it's just been oscillating at about a 200, uh, sorry, about a 150,000 or sorry, 150 million dollar range from here to where we are right now. And when usually we do see the move to the upside, actually open interest is typically coming down. When we see the moves coming to the downside, we typically see open interest going up, which is actually indicative of redistribution, which I do believe we have a good case for as well. So while I am presenting a little bit more of a bullish case right here, I want to first say at the outset, this is a weekend. I do not trust this. I think that this is like the perfect time for a trap. And um, and I do think, and I do have my reservations that Bitcoin will uh, close above 7350-ish region right here. If it does, you know, fair enough. I'm happy to, my, my, my opinion will obviously be, you know, proven wrong. Again, this is why I don't trade it. Um, but, uh, but, uh, but I would look, be looking much higher as we just kind of uh, looked at, you know, another uh, $700 move perhaps in the, in the cards, which is very much tradable, especially at a $7,000 price point. Cause that's a 10% move and that's fucking amazing. Um, but, uh, but as it stands right now, um, what I would be looking at again is with critical uh, importance on the 200 exponential average right here because there's gonna, you know, we're obviously chopping around right now. Trend technically is still down as it is right now, but very, if it is gonna have a chance to actually revert itself, it has a damn good, it has a damn good setup right here. To be fair, we do see momentum oscillators are floating, but four hours still, it's technically still up right here. They are getting a little bit more mature, but I do think that that's gonna at least give it a try. We're probably gonna at the very least get another wick to the upside, and then the question is, does it turn into rejection? or not i don't have any real opinion on that especially on a weekend i just have an opinion on what it would look like if we get a wick up and then close back down below let's call it seven thousand, especially or, or especially 69.50 that would be a damn good indication that we are going to be testing the bottom side or sorry the downside of the range um uh, by the same token, if we if we see if we see a closure above you know 7300, 7350, and open interest shoots up above 700 million again, that would be a damn good indication that this is uh, that this is getting ready to have a little bit of bula uh, enjoyment to the upside. Um, anyways, three hour soaks headed down right now, and we do see that they're quite literally nose diving. So I think that that's a little bit more on the bearish side. Two hour soaks are up right now. Hourly are going to be floundering around most likely and up. So the the general consensus among the lower term time frames is that it actually is up right now. So I do think. That that at the very least, we're going to get a test up here. And this is flagging down. This is constructive. If this was a weekday, I'd say that this is bullish as fuck. Uh, because, but, but because it is a weekend, I'm very skeptical. Uh, looking at uh, historic volatility percentile on our hourly, it, we are, we're, we're very likely to have a move today. You know, a, a very likely to have a move to not just a short-term time frame range, but probably the medium time frame range, which is basically up here towards that $7,300 number. And to the downside, uh, that's not this guy right here at 69.50. That's actually a little bit lower, um, probably somewhere down around here, around around 6750-ish region to 6700 even is what I'd be looking towards. So I'll put another blue box in right there still kind of the same range that we've been looking at yesterday but uh this is just this is just looking at liquid zones and uh, order blocks right now we can now combine this with a, an analysis of the greater formation but before we get into that again with recalling that the open interest has been essentially suggesting that we've been in one major massive formation this whole way from march 13th to where we are right now that's further confirmed by the volume signature which as you can see has been that nice tailing off from left hand to right hand side as uh, as it does suggest that we are in one massive consolidation something like this with a resolution point or an apex coming in early May. So that means we're very likely to get a resolution probably within the next uh, probably within the next week. And I do think less than that. Uh, I think I, I said earlier this week, probably around uh, uh, somewhere somewhere between this, uh, the middle of, of this current week that we just kind of finished here. And then also um, uh, like the f uh, Monday, Tuesday of this coming week. And I do still think that that actually does kind of align with that. Say about, you know, 75% full, we'll, we'll call it about uh, April 21st, it looks like. And that's uh, three days away. So that'd be Monday. Monday, Tuesday ish region, depending upon which, uh, which part of the world that you're in. So, you know, this, this read right here now tells us that it's very likely that we should be looking at this as one massive pattern formation. Now, does anything fit in the way that we've been looking at it? Well, I think actually, yes. Um, although we'll need to go to not bit Mexico because, uh, there's, you know, we have an outlier price action right here or do we, well, let's actually, let's actually go to the daily first and let me, let me, let me chart this off first and foremost. Um, so if we're using, uh, again, you know, tailing off from left hand to right hand side, also tailing off on the historic volatility percentile on a daily, which suggests that we're going to spend a lot more time in this, uh, for, in, in, in this region, actually. But the 12 hour, which should get a pretty damn good move, um, is getting, well, no, it's, it's kind of, kind of in that same trajectory, actually. Um, let's see, when, when would the apex come in around? middle of may rather than early may um and probably has a resolution here 
25th to 27th of April is usually when they become extremely likely to break. So still within the range of next week. So both, you know, both metrics suggesting somewhere in, you know, in the range of like early next week to, to late next week. Um, this is why I'd like to see the open interest because I'm sure that we'd be able to kind of like cut it to the middle there as well as we're using, you know, vol volume is going to be a little bit more direct. Volatility is going to be more of a derivative, but both very much, um, very much important. And now let's actually look for a potential pattern going on right here. So let's see if we are, if we are going to be on BitMexico, how this operate? Well, we do see something like this. The problem is, is that uh, while you can kind of plot this out right here, which would suggest that, you know, we're probably in some sort of like major massive rising channel, which is a redistribution formation, it's not going to look the same on the other majors. And I do think that it's important to get consensus on this market. Uh, sorry, let me, or, I'm sorry, I should have gone to a daily. Oh, okay, apologies. Hold on, I need to redo this. Um, that was uh, that was not proper. Uh, this one now just looks all kinds of weird, all kinds of wonkiness. Um, perhaps even this area works a little bit better, of which maybe we just tested already. Uh, but again, this this is kind of the odd man out. This is the outlier. This is why we really have to look at all different ones. Now we already know uh, GDAX kind of plotted it out from yesterday. We do see some sort of a rising uh, wedge going on right here. Volume signature does fit on it, and we actually would have technically already broken it, but we've re what, but, uh, but we've reapproached the broken um, support and now testing as resistance once, twice, maybe even working on a third time, which by the way would be coming in right here at our next top side blue box on the top side of this current formation at about 7300 ish region in this in this range between 73 uh 73 and 7350 ish region um so it would just be considered a retest of that now i do have a competing one going on right here i think that that's actually also relevant too so we'll talk about that but that's only relevant to the lower term time frames um but i want to pull up a fresh chart if i can Let's see and see if we can recreate this in a more obvious way. Um, well, actually, yeah, we do have one here. Um, however, could we chart it equally the same as something like this? I think so, yes, which would still say that we're within the context of the greater rising channel. And I do trust channels a lot more than wedges, of which the one that we were looking at priorly was a wedge. So what can you know what's the right answer here technically both actually technically both because they do fit and it would suggest that we're slowly but surely kind of tipping this one over as long as we are below that last broken trend line which i had charted more like a wedge formation like this and that we're just kind of retesting right now as you can kind of see it's kind of like hard to fit it right now which is not a good sign so maybe it's not the one to be doing but i think the channel fits a lot more obviously and does fit the narrative of the descending volume and does fit the narrative of the descending historical volatility percentile and does fit the narrative of of what you would see on the open interest if we could actually chart it back out because uh, it was down around about 500 million right here popped up to about 700 million or sorry uh pop, you know also to between about 500 million 700 million on all these moves downside moves were uh, seemed to be accumulating open interest and upside moves seem to be uh lessening open interest and we did see the same thing yesterday as well when bitcoin did or sorry two days ago or a day and a half ago i guess now where bitcoin did uh, move its way to the upside let me just make sure that i'm recording i am recording and the microphone's working that's great um <laughs> Can you hold a thought, maybe, Crown, you fucking moron? Um, but uh, uh, but my point is is that uh, you know on that last move to the upside, we did see open interest go from uh, I think a little bit above 700 million, I think 710 million down to where we are right now, 650 million. So that's suggesting that shorts closing is running the price action to the upside. So it's it's still shorts in control as far as I'm concerned. And with the overall greater formation still in a redistribution pattern, I am skeptical in this price action as I have been saying. So uh, so you know on this on this fresh chart right here, I think it's I think it's just more easily seen that we are going from level to level on a daily something like this to the upside something like this to the downside and until we break one of these there's not really like a another medium or even long-term trade to really be made uh as there's no real resolution below 6600 yes we do have resolution and i would be looking for a move back down to at the very least 58 to 5900 and that's you know that's almost a thousand dollar move at a six thousand dollar price point i mean that's what like more certainly more than a 10 percent move and almost a 15 percent move pretty damn good um again these are i just want to show that the edges on these traders are worth waiting for to the upside as i said as well above this region right here i do you know i you know we could even stay within the context of this rising channel gun for the 200 expansion we average up here and that's 7930 remember that's pretty much it within the con uh, the confines of this blue box that we have to the upside right here 
and that would still be uh, kind of testing the tops of resistance of this baby right here. So I just want to show that, you know, longer term, I, I, I am skeptical on Bitcoin, like actually just fucking green deal doing its way to, to, the, to the moon from this region, even with the halving and all that good stuff um, in order. You know, could that come into play? Yeah, absolutely. But I think that there's just more tangible things on the board right now that I, as a trader, would trust in more than, you know, events that everyone's fucking known about since the eternity of, since the dawn of eternity so because <laughs> you know the general cons or the general knowledge is that if it's public information and you've already known about it and you've been making decisions based upon it then it's very much reasonable to think or you have to defensively think if you're like a money manager managing big funds that other people are doing the same thing it's fucking free information so it's probably probably priced in um especially with regards to the fact that we have futures now too which is essentially what allows those miners to kind of make decisions well quite literally in the future so they get to make decisions you know for uh, like last year correlating with this year's knowing that they that they're gonna have the having you know relatively within you know so, uh, somewhere within that date anyways i'm getting way off topic right now jesus christ man uh let's go see what cme's closed at uh cme's closed a little bit more of a uh, more as a rejection um a little bit more toppy ish to me 70 75 so keep that in mind because going into sunday i do believe that we're probably going to be held around this region um now that again that doesn't really give us any real bias on this price action as uh the way that i look at this right here is that i'm not i while we do have the death cross and while the death cross moving averages are getting much divergence away from each other um i don't play this bearish as long as we're as long as we're above the 21 x benchmark average which right now we obviously are and that will not be uh taken out to the downside as long as we're above about 69.85 which is essentially where the 200 x benchmark average will be on spot and i think that this is an easier look on price action as well because if we do take out the low side of this it's going to look like a doji dodo plus plus fall through to the downside plus below a major movement average and i'd imagine that we're going to see momentum also just turn back down around with it we do see, yeah we're going to see uh, stokes carry on to the downside daily rsi probably do the same thing as well it still looks overall bearish to me so I, I i would say that that would be a damn good insight but that means that I'll, at least for myself i'll have to wait until sunday at 7 or 8 p.m eastern time or sorry it's actually sunday at 5 p.m east or central standard time um uh, in order for these babies to open back up and uh, potentially give me a source of edge for this. So again, putting all the puzzle pieces together and going back to spot price action right here. Let me actually go back to our, our bit Mexican chart. Um, let's actually go look at the let's 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 actually look at the measure move of this as a rising channel. If this is going to operate as a rising channel, we'll actually go back to our fresh chart here. I'm just curious. Um, again, this video is going to be a little bit on the shorter side, I think, overall. Uh, this one going to show potentially a breakdown. You know, if we were to break down, if we were to break down a measure move all the way down to the, it's it's hard to know because you know you don't you don't really take it until we actually break down. But proverbially speaking, uh, assuming that it would come maybe like early next week. Um, if it does come to the downside, I'd look for a move down to about 5,500 ish region to 5,600. That does make sense with the 200 X benchmark average and 200 simple moving average, or sorry, more so the 200 simple actually at this point, cause the 200 X benchmark average is getting way up there. Um, 200 simple is all the way down around actually 56. It looks like right now. So it's still got a little bit of work to do. What's up, Alex? Good to meet you, man. And welcome to the cave. Um, and also I want to see how CME's closed the weekly. Yeah. The weekly on CME's looks a lot more like a hangman dildo right there as well, which is more inherently bearish. If you are just going off of uh, dildo formations, um, which I actually don't trust that much in Bitcoin land. Weekly Stokes going to certainly be, uh, or sorry, are they going to certainly be down? Um, let's go look at this. The, re the reverse Stoke indicator says they will cross they will cross the upside if we do close anywhere above 6350 so they should close they should cross up next week um by the same token we do have a rejection on the weekly rsi and i do think that that's probably going to be held there so you know is this going to be a one-off to the upside here I, I think probably yeah uh looking at the reverse rsi uh ema cross yeah it does show 7350 so that area is going to be a big area going forwards here as long as we're below there i am not bullish for the medium or long term it's only short-term ranges and that's something that i can say with uh well at least for myself for my trading behaviors with uh well you know as like kind of like an anchor of my trading behaviors right now um and of course major moving averages uh on the weekly as well are in a much in, in a very bearish posturing you know even if we do pop back up and test around 78 to 7900 ish region as we were kind of showing earlier i would look at that area as another area of massive fuckery as well so 
patience here is going to be a little bit of a virtue as it as weekend trading is rather annoying to deal with typically speaking at least for myself you know may, uh, i'm sure some people out there love it and you know more power to you i hope that you're making as much money as fucking possible and i sincerely mean that i i, I really sincerely mean that because uh well why the fuck not man go do good just like i fucking hate it when people say like money is bad no if you if you're gonna be good with money then it's just gonna accentuate your goodness that's all just do fucking good things with it jesus christ is that such a hard concept to understand it's like fuck for fuck's sake man for fuck's sake it's like an amplifier you know it's 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 like it's like uh it's like beer it's it's like it's like getting drunk you know if you're an asshole and you get drunk you turn into a bigger asshole if you're that nice guy and and uh or, or just even like doesn't even need to be a nice guy but a good guy and he gets drunk and he's just you know happy and g giving hugs to people he probably just does that even more you know it's just like that man it's it's an amplifier as far as i'm concerned okay another stupid rant that i'm getting off of uh, i'm getting off uh, chart on here sorry about that i apologize you don't want to hear about that you want to hear more about uh, price action and uh, I think now is a good time to go check in on traditional markets we spoke about this yesterday that uh, traditional markets were the best case for Bitcoin kind of going to the upside here and let's see how they close yesterday now we did come down we spoke about this during the twitch stream yesterday that we were likely to come down actually exactly to this level 87 30 ish region did bounce from there and I do think that we are going to open up next week probably retesting the high um, but is the momentum waning on this on, on this right now I think so yes I think I think that we actually are going to be putting in a local top here for the short and medium term and probably come back down into this region somewhere right around the 84s low 84s i'd say uh maybe maybe upper 83s sometime in next week so i do think that again to kind of like synthesize those thoughts down uh look at us looking especially at nasdaq features which i think are running this market you know and again just going from level to level this is just beautiful right here fucking beautiful oh gotta love it man gotta fucking love it the simplicity of this uh sometimes um we did say that we were likely to hit around 8900 we got up to 8950 that's fine um and then i said likely a short-term and medium-term reversal I think that's what we're going to get coming into next week. Although next week should open up around uh, around yesterday, Friday's high. Uh, looking at E-mini futures, probably going to be about the same thing. Actually still within the context of this rising wedge. It sounds familiar now, doesn't it? And also a very precarious place as well, because not only are we in a redistribution pattern, but volume signature is 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 confirming that. And we do see that we're kind of at the, preps, the precipice of a major change of behavior here too, because the longer that it saves above the 55, this green moving average, the you know the more and more likely it will unfuck this death cross but if the death cross does want to play out this would be a damn good place to reverse from and if we do break down below i mean even just even just friday's low would probably do it for me uh, confirming that as reversal i'd look for a measure move to be initiated somewhere down around here somewhere down it down back into like the 25 uh, uh 25 to 2600 range which is going to correlate with like 255 260 ish region on spot price action and then we'll come back and reassess after that um, by the same token of the upside uh, if this thing makes another leg of the upside we're going to see 310 <laughs> we're going to see like 305 to 310 it's going to and everyone's going to get very very happy and very very bullish and that would be another good place for, for you know for a massive meltdown uh the only thing that really concerns me about traditional marks right now is that everyone everyone and their mother thinks that they're being the genius thinking like fuck i watched that movie called uh what was it called uh the big short and you know what i know exactly what's going on it's got to me right now we're gonna be going to fucking zero this thing's fucked and maybe it is but you're not alone in thinking that you're not the fucking only person thinking that that is the majority of the market right now um so that you know that's the other thing making me think that ah, do we have another move back to like 310 first probably yeah it's certainly not out of the question but uh, but hey if we take out friday's low then yeah i would look for that for uh, for that house cards to crumble a little bit more but for right now um i'd say caution against the wind uh, let's go check out uh, the other market leaders, uh, Mr. Buterall and Mrs. Litecoin. Mr. Buterall actually breaking the long-term downtrend, it looks like, if you are going to be using this as a long-term downtrend, something like that. Bitcoin, nowhere near actually breaking that same level. We can go back on over here and look at it. In fact, what do you know? This level even correlates directly with, holy shit, that blue box of destiny, perhaps, perhaps destiny, if you are looking at it as such. Oh, also correlating with the top side resistance of this baby as well. So strange, right? And uh, and I'm sure, I'm sure people are going to be like, but Crown, don't you know this one right here too? Yes, I know about this one right here too. It's all good. <laughs> it's, <laughs> I don't really trust diagonals that much. You're, uh, I, 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 at least not, not enough to trade, but it is fun to, to, an, to analyze the size on. Um, but, you know, going back down to lower timeframes here, I did forget to talk about this. Um, 
this is relevant as well. We do see, <laughs> to quote my fucking hate for diagonals, we do actually see that there is something resembling a falling channel here, which typically does break out to the upside. If we did make a measure move on this, it is a little bit funny that we would actually see the measure move correlate actually nowhere near. What the fuck? Um, that's cause, that's because it's getting the bottom of the uh, of the order block right here. So I'm I'm doing a more aggressive read on this, looking at the liquid zone. If I were looking at the order block, it would say about 7800, which would be the bottom side of this. You know, it's it's all within range there, right there. And it depends where we break out from too. So you know you know if, if you know if we were to break out from this region right here, it would be obviously higher. Anyways, enough of that. Jesus fucking Christ, man. Um um, um to me, it's pretty damn simple. Uh, for uh, even even like a four hour total closure above 7130 very very likely we will test up this region another couple hundred bucks higher um, that's where things actually can change for the macro but I don't think that I don't think that that's what's happening to be actually directly clear and deliberately clear maybe um, but again I you know my opinion is not necessary for that uh, to the downside a little uh, to the downside actually uh, a lot more easy but a little more diabolical any any four hour total closure below 6450 and I do believe that this uh, that this will play out as a um, as uh, at, you know, as an efficacious death cross, we will very likely come down to this region right here, six seven fifty. Test there, probably probably do another anemic bounce, but. I do believe that that bounce will be sold into, and then we will likely come down uh, into the mid 5,000s. Um, so things kind of shifting around here, and uh, I think it's also still relevant to talk about this. Uh, it's not gonna be so much of a shorter <laughs> video now, is it, huh? Not gonna be so much of a shorter video. Anyways, um, 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 uh, looking at the two day, uh, we can just quickly go through this as well. You know, the two day total death cross, I do, I, again, I do think that the two day total death cross is still very much relevant. And I do think that it could still very much play out as we do see a very similar signature to, here to what we've seen in the past uh, in both in both instances. Now the third one kind of formulated in front of our very eyes. So this could be a trend if it does play out. Uh, but this one right in over here, green and purple, 55 and 200 crossing the downside, slowly but surely gets round down below the 21, although it does test the 55 along the way and that is a and that is a hallmark of the last past crosses um and then boom massive move to the downside 50 percent. you already know from 6,000 basically to 3,000. time before that was right in over here in 2014 2015 um uh at this price point price action very far away from uh from from the cross itself which i think is kind of a is, is kind of similar to what we're doing right now too bitcoin gets another test back up to the 55 although after that gets quickly rejected and once it's back down below the 21, that's when the inevitable downside does play out. So what I'm looking at right here is is same thing as a daily. I you know I, I look at this as overall bearish as long as we're below the death cross moving averages, which are where huh, they're conveniently right at that fucking upper seven thousand dollar number, right around seven eight hundred if you want to get super exact. Um, but uh, but I don't play to the downside as long as we are above the 21 expansion moving average on especially a closing basis, and we will be closing this two day dildo. To, um, nope, not tonight, tomorrow night, tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, so it's going to be a long day, I suppose. But uh, if we do get another test up to the 55, as we have in the past couple instances, I'd say that that would be pretty, you know, pretty stock standard. And uh, it also would be in line with even the short term ranges as that would really start to change things around. So uh, I feel like I've missed quite a few things on this video. But uh, again, I feel like this past week's videos have been more or less uh, on topic for that anyways. And realistically, I'm um, looking at this price action right here, especially on a weekend when it's kind of flagging out, it's probably gonna, you know, prob like likely to be trappy. Uh, it's just higher, higher degree, higher degree of trappiness behavior on a weekend. We can go quickly check out um, uh, probability ranges right in over here, and uh, can actually look at this a little bit differently as well if we want to actually do some ring analysis. Which should we? Can we? Um, we can do future bars. Yeah, if I do it on future bars, it should actually do better with the. Uh, with the with the slopes of these babies and right now they're both squeezing on each other the the downsides or sorry the upsides the sorry the ones to the bottom side which are squeezing the upside there the slope on that's a little bit more a little bit more impressive a little bit more a little bit more uh, direct not too crazy and maybe it's just my eyes kind of making that up no i, I do think i do think it's a little bit more uh, steady there um so technically speaking it would be a little bit more angled to the upside however what i really want to be looking at is the probabilities of the range that we're looking at as of the current moment in time and by the way current if i use current it actually does push down a little bit more i i i, I think this is going to turn into a little bit of a fake out so 7350 still the relevant area to the upside i would say 70 6700 the downside a more conservative estimate more aggressive 70 uh, 6750 um and uh, what do we see actually the range is for both relatively small in comparison uh, let me just make sure yeah i do have my settings right i believe and uh above target probability 17 and percent on today's daily total closure 
So it, you know, it, it certainly is possible. Uh, it's be it's it's better than one standard deviation. However, um, uh, or sorry, it's it's within one standard deviation. It looks like yeah, just right there. I think that's a half one on the gray. Um, so that so so you know to put that in perspective that actually is rather high uh 14 and a quarter percent to the downside again still within the realm of possibility but realistically we have more than uh, what's our inside probability it's going to be well the difference between those which is about 68 and a quarter uh that we're just going to be also in between 6 73 50 to the upside and 67 50 to the downside which i think is most likely here especially on a weekend i think that we're probably going to test sides of the ranges on the short term um but do we get an actual break on the short term well well, a break of the week's trend in this case would be uh, will, 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 uh, would be continuation of the downside, uh, not to the upside, as this is still a four-hour downtrend as it stands. It can very easily revert itself here, but uh, as it stands, it technically is that way. Um, so I think this video is probably already way too long. Apologies for that. I thought it was going to be a shorter video. Apparently not. I do you like how the four-hour 200 simple is going to start to align with the blue box of peace and destiny uh, to the downside right here if, if we do drone on a little bit longer? So that should be happening by tomorrow, I do believe, um, unless things just absolutely shatter before end of day today, which I think is a little bit unlikely. I think that we're probably going to have to wait until tomorrow for like the, you know, a nice move. And, uh, and then we should resolve the range either. And sorry, and I'm not talking about the short term range, which is just guy and this guy, but rather the medium term range. Uh, this guy over here, 7350 and 6750, the downside. I, I think that we're going to be resolving that uh, early this next week. Very, very likely. Um, uh, quickly, we can look at like the Trollinger bands, just see if we can come up with any sort of other biases. Uh, Trollinger bands, what? Um, actually, actually showing some more inherent bull bullishness here, as we did have a fake out to the downside right here. And that usually is, a, that usually is pretty damn good. And what do you, what do you know? Where's the top side of the uh, trolling bands on a daily 7,300 fucking obviously. Uh, we'll quickly look at the McDonald's as well and see what that one's showing. Let's see, what do you, what do you got for me today? Um, 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 could it be, could it be that we're just going to be putting another set of uh, bearish divergence here on the on the histogram? Maybe, um, but that's that's fucking crystal ball bullshit, which I need to call myself out on. I don't really that, and that also imply that we're going to get higher highs on price action too. So could we move up here and put in another di set of divergence there? Yeah, could be. Um, so there you go. Uh, I don't, I'm not really getting too much uh, else off of it other than that. The the only way that I really get some off this is if is if we come down below the zero read again and cross the downside, which we're not doing right now. Um, and that's not going to happen. Very unlikely to happen today. In fact, so you know what I'd like to see on the MACD is like an obvious signal. I'd like to see like a medium term time frame range broken. So six seven hundred in this region in, in this in this case would be great. Um, plus that crossing back down below the zero read that would be damn good for some some inherent downside back down. Down below 6,000 and into like the mid 5,000s, probably to the upside, a little bit more difficult. Um, I actually think that the shorter term time frames are, re are representing that a little bit more accurately and a little bit more uh, easily uh, right here. So other than that, really not very much has changed from yesterday to today. Bitcoin's flagging out and, and improving its bullish chances, I think, a little bit more. But uh, keep an eye on this because uh, when these when these guys start to kiss, if, the, if there is going to be a trap, I would look for it somewhere right around there. Um, anyways, that's going to do it for right now. I'm not going to be trading today. I will be uh, on Twitch later today for a long, 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 long time. In fact, I'm debating just not eating and just playing all day so, uh, so we can and maybe see some moves together. Uh, other than that, I want to wish you well once again. Take care, and, uh, and until next time.